state standards from kindergarten to high school require students to be able to recall and understand events in sequenced order. A fun way to introduce this concept is by creating a personal narrative and placing it on a timeline. Understanding sequences and events is critical in understanding and being able to recall events in history. By using a narrative input chart, you can take a story, place it in a sequential order, and have your students practice putting these events from beginning, middle, and end. Because this is a requirement from kindergarten all the way through high school, by teaching our students using a timeline in their early educational career, we're gonna set them up for success in later grades. So how do we create a personal narrative? Well, first you create your story. You're going to have a seemingly blank background with a simple timeline on it. You'll choose images to represent different events within your own life. And then you'll write a simple story to go along with it. Then you retell the story with the students, placing those images on the timeline so that it teaches the students this happened first, next, then, and finally. Once your students have shared out with a neighbor what events might be most exciting to add to their personal narrative, now you can have them start to create their personal story. They can sketch, they can write, and develop their own story. Having your students create personal narratives and teach one another about their lives, we build cultural sensitivity and respect within our classrooms. Once your students have created their narratives using pictures from photo albums or sketches or pictures that they've created themselves, they can then either share them with a partner or with the whole class. Using a personal narrative on a timeline for an extended activity allows your students to get to know one another on a more personal basis. They can make connections, they can start to understand what experiences they've had in their life and how it's kind of shaped who they are as people. And once you know someone, then it is so much easier to interact, support, and connect with them. Now let's watch how this happens in the classroom. I'm gonna be presenting my All About Me narrative with a second grade class. My friends, I am gonna tell you a story that is called All About Me. And I am the author, my name is Mrs. Brooks. All right, so let's start. Ready? Hello, my name is Mrs. Brooks. I was born October 16th, 1971 in Bakersfield, California. Now I have two sisters. I was raised in Bakersfield with my two sisters and my mom. And I stayed there until I was a young adult. When I was a very young girl, I went to Norris Elementary and Junior High. And then in 1989, I graduated. Everybody do this and say, woohoo! I graduated. I graduated from high school and then I attended Bakersfield College. When I wasn't in class, I worked at a fabric store. I would tell my friends, I want to be a teacher when I grow up. One day in June of 1993, John came to my sorority meeting and he gave me a rose and he said, will you marry me? We were married in Los Angeles, California, and then we moved to Exeter, California. 
after the, mar after the wedding. We lived there for many, many years. John and I had our children in 1996, 1998, 2000, and 2002. They are all grown up now. Look how grown up my babies are now, I say to myself. After living my whole life in the Central Valley of California, John came home one day and he told us I got a job in Idaho. So we moved from California to Idaho in 2020. The weather in Idaho is very different than California. My story has many different events in it, but there are some that mean a lot to me, and so I included them in my story. My story's not over, and neither is yours. What I want you to think about, I'm gonna put this one up here, and then I'm gonna put up a question. This says, what does your timeline look like? Your timeline, this one's mine, but what does yours look like? And which events do you want to include? Maybe it's your birthday, or maybe a day that you won a special game or something really exciting. When I say the signal word, if you're an A, find a B, and you're gonna tell them, what events do you want to tell on your timeline that's all about me? Igneous, igneous. So let me hear some ideas. What are some things that you would want to put put on your timeline? Um, what I would like to put on my story is uh, definitely not the times when I have fight with my siblings. Um, I just want to put like a sad <gasps> So a time that you went to somewhere really exciting. Yes, please tell me. What's one thing you'd like to put on your story, on your timeline? <gasps> so Disney World, Disneyland. I love that your brains are really thinking about how you could write a story about your life. So when we write a story on a timeline, do we start with today and go backwards? Or do we start with the beginning, like when we were born and move forward? Oh, we start when we're born and then we move forward. Or if we're just talking about maybe our first expedition at Disney World, we start at the beginning of the tour and then we move forward, right? So that's called a sequence of events. And did you know that right now it's important for you to learn about timelines and sequence of events in second grade, but even up in junior high, high school and college, knowing how to put events in order is extremely important. So we're practicing it now so that when you're in college, it's gonna be easy peasy, okay? Creating an all about me narrative in the beginning of the year allows the students to get a peek into who you are and where you came from. It helps to build the community that you're looking for in your classroom. Consider the events of your life which of those events would you like to share with your students? What do you think would help them make a personal connection with you as their teacher this year?